Hi, my name is Zupari and I'd like to welcome you to this week's portrait painting demonstration. So this week along with my painting demonstration I'm going to be focusing a little more on the development of the eye. But first, let's get a simple block in going. So right now I'm working the outside shape of the head. I'm considering the top and the bottom most portions of the hair mass. And I'm starting to block in the top and the bottom of the actual head. It's important for me to get the big picture established as simply as possible. So that I create a working scaffolding for the rest of the shapes to come. So now that I have my outside shape somewhat figured out. In the inside shapes I'm going to put place markers for where the eyes are going to go and the nose. But before I put any more information into the eyes, let's skip ahead to the actual demonstration of the eye structure. So for this portion of the video, I'll be using soft fine charcoal on top of a newsprint pad. So I'll be giving you the basic information of what I think of when I draw an eye or paint an eye. So I started with an eyeball and I'm going to be drawing out the folds of the eyelids, the upper eyelid and the bottom eyelid. Notice that they roll on top of the actual eyeball. And uh, I don't I don't draw the eyeball or paint it every time, but I just I think about it as a structure. I think about the upper eyelid rolling across the actual eyeball and the lower eyelid doing the same at the bottom. So these lines right here, I'm putting in the direction of the curvature of the skin just as it curves into the upper eyelid and the bottom eyelid forming the structure of the eye socket. So I'm thinking of the actual structure, the three-dimensional structure that exists underneath of the, the eyebrow. So I'll make a little indication for the where the eyebrow would go. So let's get into how to actually draw out the eye. So I'm going to simplify this little block end of an eye into just four four lines to start with, along with the the center of the iris. So I'm going to have a uh, let's wipe that too. So I'm going to have a one, two, three, and four. So these are my four basic lines. Well, you can also add in the line on top of the three. I guess that should have been five. But those are the few lines that I use to block in an eye. So next to the shape of the eye, I'm going to be drawing the gesture of the eye that indicates the center axis of the eye and the vertical axis. So right here we have an eye that's in three-quarter view. The eye that I drew before was in center view, facing you. So now that I have the gesture down, I'm putting the shape version of this. So this is the basic block in version of an eye in three quarter view. Notice how very few lines I'm using. 
but I'm still indicating the side, the other side of the eye. So now I'm going to be drawing the gesture of an eye in profile view. So its vertical axis is perpendicular to me. It's looking away. So now let's get into the shape of the, the eye facing away, or the eye in profile view. So I have just a, you can count it, one, two, three, four, just five lines to indicate this block in. And the reason I'm using such few lines in these um, these simple block-ins is that whenever you're doing a block-in in charcoal, graphite, oil paint, whatever, it's you're usually not going to place the eye correctly at first, and it takes a couple tries. So it, it's useful to keep these block-ins as uh, mobile as possible, so that you're able to move them around until you get to the right proportion. So on the left side, I've indicated the mass, or mass approach to blocking in an eye. Mass meaning it's just simple light and shadow. Um, so just to reiterate, the left side is the eye and mass. The middle is the block in, and the far right is the gesture. So getting back to the actual painting demonstration, what you have here is the block in and burnt umber color. So now I'm going to be filling in the dark value of the hair. Since I'm working on white, I, um, I like to build up my values from darkest to lightest. So once I start getting into the colors on the flesh side of the face, I mix a value scale of flesh tones with a cooler puddle of gray or green at the bottom, as you can see here. So I went ahead and blocked in the simple structures of the face, and now we're going to be getting into the eyes. So I'm going to be lining up the iris of the eyes with respect to the center lines of the eyes. That is, I'm thinking of the direction in which the model is looking and I'm going to be drawing in the, the iris of the eye with respect to that. And um, so once I have that placed, I'm going to be putting in the structures of the eyelids. As you can see, I'm starting to block in the darker mass for the lower eyelid. That mark I made there was for a little bit of the, the color. So sometimes with eyes, I, I use the the skin color a little bit along with some like blue some cooler blues you don't want the color of the eye to be too similar to the skin tones that's usually not the case they're usually a little cooler in color or cooler in temperature so it's important to keep things simple, or as simple as possible, yet exact. So I'm putting the uh, darker mask for the eyelashes, or the under portions of the, the upper eyelid, and I'm only using a few brush marks to indicate that, because uh, when you back up, or when you go far away, it will be readable in space. And I'm putting a simple mark for the top portion of the crease of the upper eyelid.
so as I finish this demonstration, I'll be putting a little bit more information into the hair. Uh, this seems to be the trend with me these days, so whenever I'm done with the face, I'll get into other things like the hair, or jewelry, or just smaller details. Thanks again for watching this week's portrait painting demonstration, and stay tuned for more weekly videos.